just try to make me feel better because you've rejected me. That's fine. It's good for my chart. Let's talk about rejection, shall we? Everyone loves a bit of rejection. Hello, my name is Katie. I'm a live event illustrator and yeah, this video, it's all about basically everything I learned from doing a 100 no thank yous challenge. Years ago, in 2019, I did a 100 no thank yous challenge. I wrote a blog post about it. I'll put that up here for you to see. Yeah, the basic idea was I was on a mission to get 100 people to say no to me because I was really scared of people saying no to me. <laughs> A stupid idea. <laughs> I'd seen a lady called Tiffany Han was doing a thing. She had a project called Raise Your Hand Say Yes and her idea was to get 100, was it 100 rejections? I don't know. Anyway, she had stickers and a chart. I didn't go that far. I just got a like piece of A3 paper on my studio, my bedroom wall and I went out and every time somebody said no to me, I marked it on the chart and every time someone did yes to me I didn't get to add a thing but I'd ask them. A lot of stuff happened from there. I've recently done a podcast with my internet friend, real life friend maybe now, uh, Liz Mosley who is also doing a rejection challenge or she's just done one, I don't know if she's finished. Um, I'll link that podcast in the description. If you're doing your own I would love to know about it. Somebody messaged me on Instagram, actually this is a good point, and they had, they said like what's what are the rules around it? There are no rules. You don't need anything special. I had a piece of paper like this. A piece of paper on my wall and I actually did it was that way. I wrote 100 no thank yous and then all different sized drawings. I mean, I did like a circle and I just wrote in what I was working on. And then I didn't even get to 100 and there was no time limit. <laughs> so the least amount of rules there could have been, that's how I, that's how I did the challenge. So I hope this is useful. Yeah, if you're doing one or you've done one, let me know. I know sometimes people tag me on Instagram. I love seeing your 100 day, 100 rejections. I see a lot of 100 day project posts as well, which are so good, so exciting. And it's the same idea, like if you're doing a 100 day project, you're just creating more work. And if you're doing a 100 no thank yous, you're applying for more opportunities, putting yourself in the way of more opportunities. And it can only really be a good thing, and unless you're really, really tired and you need a rest, in which case, Pause. Pause all the projects and, and have a proper rest. I learned a lot. The first thing that I learned was sort of you've got to be in it to win it situation. So because I was putting myself in front of all these opportunities and asking for these people to say no, I wasn't asking them to say no, you know what I mean? I was like putting myself in positions where people could say no to me, I think is the big difference. So many people said yes. And I got so many more things that I would never have got. If I hadn't been doing the challenge, I would just never have applied. One of the things was I live near Edinburgh and they had an Uruwali thing where you could submit your design to go, you know, those big like statues that they put around the street, like public art. I think it's called Wild in Art or something, the company in the UK that does it. It raises money for charity, blah, 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 you get paid. And I designed one with like Scottish flowers on. I didn't really think anything more of it. I was like, I'm going to submit that. That's one thing on my chart. I got an email saying you haven't been successful. And I was like, yes, unsuccessful. Definitely on the chart, that's good. And um, yeah, forgot about it, carried on with my life. I think I was doing my master's at the time, Edinburgh College of Art. I was busy with that. Then maybe a month, six weeks later, I got another email and they were like, hi, Katie. The other per, what was it? That other person that dropped out. I'm gonna find the email. He, I found it. Okay. Dear artist, so personalised. <laughs> uh, last night we held our art selection event for Edinburgh's Uawali Big Bucket Trail, and I wanted to share with you an update. Your design was not chosen at this event, and they did say a number of our sponsors weren't able to attend, so there are a number of selections that still need to be made. You know, whatever. You're just trying to make me feel better because you've rejected me. It's fine. It's good for my chart. And then. Dear Katie, a progress, we've got a name now, I'm getting there. Hope this email finds you well. We've been busy trying to lock down our 60 plus sponsors art selections. I'm pleased to let you know that your design has been sponsored by Transport for Edinburgh. Way! So that was a whole month later. I got, I got paid like a decent amount of money. I got to paint a big Uawali statue and it ended up on Princess Street. I ever said a hot dog van actually, which was nice. <laughs> And yeah, that was the, one of the, the early lessons was people say no, but it's sometimes and not yet. Things like you apply for things and it's not yet, but then they know you exist and you're on their radar. So just think about that when you're doing this kind of thing. The 
the other lesson was maybe like that rejection is a normal part of the creative process it's so boring not every idea is a brilliant idea the more ideas you have the more ideas you have and if people reject one idea you can just have more it's yeah it gave me a healthier approach to just like churning out things and applying for things and kind of having more of a throwaway attitude to it in a healthy way like I wasn't just like seeking rejection for the sake of it it just stopped me not doing things. It helped me like build a thicker skin. I'm still a delicate flower and I don't like rejection. I don't think anyone likes rejection. Come on. But yeah, this was a good way to just gamify it. And even now when I see something to apply for, when you get that little, I get that little voice in my head that's like, don't even bother, like, there's no point, you won't get it. And then another part of me is like, well, it's kind of like I'm continuing my no thank you challenge. Let's just get them to say no thank you to me and then I've tried at least. Yeah, there was a competition with Josephine Owusu and I saw Liz Mosley, who I just mentioned, had applied and I was like, ooh, I'm gonna apply too and see what happens. And I won the main prize, so I got six months of strategic business coaching, which actually is why I'm here making these YouTube videos again because yeah, one of my goals was to get more consistent with creating content again and stuff like that. So yeah, like one tiny decision Tiny decision to apply for things and see if you get in or not leads on to so many other things. It's magic, really, really is magic. I was really interested actually when I spoke to Liz about this. She said one of the people that she'd got in touch with, and she shared with me their response, they were like saying that it was, I can't even remember what they said, it was just like they thought badly about it and they were like, it's terrible to just seek rejection, you shouldn't be doing this. I think it was kind of from the angle like you should only be doing high quality work. And I wanted to say like just because you're doing a challenge like this doesn't mean that you're just churning out bad work or you're just firing off terrible ideas for the sake of it. You can still have pride in your work and do a good job and fill in application forms properly and like yeah like the Ua Wally statue. I did like take time over doing the design and things in response to that anonymous man. The last thing is, I don't know anybody who's got to 100 no thank yous. And the reason for that, nobody gets to 100 rejections because I think I got like 30 in and then I was, that too much work, I couldn't do anything else. And I didn't have time to do these applications or submit my work for things that might be good. Because I wanted to do a good job if I was going to do them and my whole diary was taken up with illustration work and fun things that I'd applied for and cool stuff. I don't think I've ever met anyone who's had a bad, like properly bad experience. It's horrible when people say no to you, sometimes people can be rude. I feel like now in my business, because I get quite a few inquiries all the time, like often I'm too expensive, their budget isn't big enough, I mean, let's shift there. You know sometimes they can be a little bit rude about it or somebody's applied for funding and they're like, we didn't get the funding and the funder said it was because the live illustrator was so expensive. That's happened once and I really took it to heart. I was like, oh my god, it's my fault that they didn't get the funding. But it's not my fault, it's, I mean, it is my fault, but if it is my fault, they can apply again. Nobody's died. I'm an illustrator, I draw pictures uh, at the end of the day. Thank goodness I'm not like a brain surgeon or something. I'd Hats off to brain surgeons. Okay, I feel like I've, I've waffled enough about rejection challenges. So yeah, I will see you soon. Um, have fun getting rejected.